And now, thirdly, within the world of Islam. When we arrived at the Mogadishu airport, I think it took about 90 minutes to go through the immigration. Very noisy immigration. Um, people shouting. And I heard the word Allah over and over again as we were going through immigration. And so I very quickly, instantly became aware that moving into the world of Islam, I was moving into a world where a perception of God permeated the whole culture. I suppose I heard Allah expressed a thousand times during those 90 minutes wending my way through the immigration um, experience. And so I knew I was in the midst of a very religious people and uh, a people for whom God consciousness was very, very important. And uh, it was illegal. It was against the law to propagate the Christian faith in Somalia. And so we were not free to invite people and so forth to consider the Christian faith. We were guests in that society, and we served in ways that, uh, that the Somali people determined that we should serve. Uh, they welcomed us with our schools and medical programs, um, very much appreciated what we did. It was a wonderful time, although, as I say, it was a restrictive situation. But many times we would hear a knock on the door at night as someone would come and say, could you kindly introduce me to the Torah or the Psalms, the Zabur, or the scriptures that the Quran says God has revealed and that the Christians have possession of these scriptures? And so these, we call them Nicodemuses. You remember in the Bible, uh, John chapter 3, how Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. And so these Nicodemuses would come. Uh, I remember on one occasion, uh, the district commissioner in the town where I was living uh, invited me into his office. And um, he said to me, I understand that some of the students in the school that you are uh, involved in are becoming believers in Jesus the Messiah. And I'm very concerned about that. And I want to do an investigation and find out what you're doing, that this would be happening. So I asked him, may I please respond to what you're saying? And he said, yes, you may do that. Uh, I said, I will not comment on whether students are becoming believers in Jesus or not. You do your investigation and come to your decision. Only God knows the heart. But be free to investigate, for we are guests in your country, and we want to live as appreciative guests and not go counter to the laws of the land. But I said, I have a problem, and I need help from you to know how to respond to my problem. I said, when I believed in Jesus the Messiah many years ago, way back in Tanzania, at Bumangi, where I grew up, which I referred to here, <laughs> why uh, uh, God called me. And uh, I believed in Jesus. And I experienced him as my savior. And uh, uh, as I said yes to that call, the spirit of God filled me with joy and with love. And that is a gift at the center of my being. I cannot destroy that gift. And occasionally, students come to me and they say, they, they say to me, we see within you the gift of joy and of love, and we know it has something to do with the gospel, the faith that you have embraced. And we would like to hear what this faith is that is so important to you. I said, can I say no to that kind of an inquiry? Should I say no? Uh, what if you would wish to uh, explore the faith that is so central to my life. Could I or the government prevent you? Are you not a free person? And he looked at me, and they, uh, they, they called me Daoud Sheikh. That was my, my name in Somalia, Daoud Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh meaning the holy man, and Daoud, of course, comes from the biblical David. He said, Daoud Sheikh, you are doing very well. We will do no further investigation continue as you are doing. And so there was space within that society for us to live and to serve freely, and the door was often open to answer questions as people came asking questions. 
those were very good years in Somalia. So that's sort of chapter three of my life. First of all, the religious milieu, the religious culture in which I lived in at Bumangi in Tanzania, there among the anthills and the gospel taking root in that culture and transforming the culture in life-giving ways. And then my experience in America with the conservatism of the church that I related to and what it meant to follow Jesus within that religious culture. And then living within a Muslim culture in Somalia, which was a very special experience. I thank God forever for the many Muslim friends I developed there. And then that door closed. There was a, a, a Soviet-led um, revolution um, in, um, in Somalia. Uh, Marxism and Leninism became the ideology, both of which were atheistic ideologies. And although it was a 100% Muslim country, the atheism began to take deep root in the culture, and um, uh, it was a challenging time. And the, uh, the uh, so Somalia made a clear turn towards, towards the east. This was the head of the Cold War, the, at the height of the Cold War between the west and the east, and uh, the turn in the direction of, uh, of Soviet ideology uh, meant that there was no space for Western people to serve in Somalia. And so although this was an African country in Eastern Africa, 100% Muslim, we found that during that revolutionary time that there was no space in the society for those of us who came from the West and particularly from the United States. And so we had to leave. Uh, we were deeply grieved about that. We wished we could stay longer. But it's interesting to me that it was not the Muslims who pushed us out of the country. They loved us. We were welcome. It was, uh, it was the atheistic ideology that pushed us out of the country. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. And so we went to Nairobi, Kenya, um, which is just south of Somalia, and uh, moved into the Muslim area of the city of Nairobi, and uh, uh, lived among the Muslims right across the street from the uh, Muslim mosque. This was a Sufi mosque, and uh, I hope later in this class to say a little bit more about Sufism. Sufism is a mystical stream of Islam that yearns to have a relationship with God and believe that one way to have a relationship with God is to repeat the name of God over and over and over again. And so we lived in Nairobi right across the street from the large Sufi mosque in that city. And every Thursday night, uh, the congregation of Sufis would gather together and they would, they would recite the name of God over and over again. Uh, uh, for hours they would recite God's name. And so we would invite the Sufi leaders to our home. Sometimes we had a goat feast and invited them to join us for a goat feast. And sometimes they would invite us to meet with them. And we would talk about what it means to experience God in the Christian faith, what gift the gospel offers in fulfilling that quest of the Sufis, that search of the Sufis to meet God. We would talk at length about that. And a fellowship of believers developed there in Nairobi. It was a very good time. Um, I was teaching at the University of Nairobi at that time. And uh, that was uh, a very exciting experience. I taught world religions there, um, which is the class I'm teaching you here now. <laughs> and much of my approaches in the class here, I learned and developed during my years teaching at the University of Nairobi. In fact, a book came out of that that I will introduce you to later in this course called Global Gods, which became a textbook which is used in universities in different parts of the world even today. That text came out of that experience 
in Nairobi, in Kenya, in a Muslim environment, but mostly a Christian African environment, teaching world religions in that culture, in that context. And something happened there in that university, which became very significant for us. Badju Katrega was assigned to the religious studies department where I was teaching in the university. In fact, he and I were both assigned to teach world religions together uh, at the University of Nairobi, Kenyatta campus. He was a devout Muslim from Uganda, and I was a Christian whose roots were in East Africa. And so a Christian with roots in East Africa and a Muslim with roots in Uganda were teaching side by side uh, the course on world religions. And um, we became very good friends. But also, our centers were very different. For him, the Quran was the final word of revelation, revelation, the final word of truth from God. That was the center of his understanding of truth. And for me, Jesus Christ, whom I read about this morning in this scripture passage, was the center of my life and the community of the church to which I was committed. And so as we entered into that class, teaching world religions, we were teaching from different centers. He from a Quranic-centered understanding of revelation, and me from a Christ-centered understanding of revelation. And so we would have dynamic discussion and debate in class as we both taught that class together. And as the students became involved in asking questions and probing us, and pushing us with their questions. It was a very dynamic, for two years, we talked together in that class. And then we got an idea, which actually came from others. Why don't we take our friendship one step further and actually write a book describing our faith centers? And the thought was, he would write 12 chapters on what he believes as a Muslim, and I would respond to each chapter as a Christian. And then I would write 12 chapters of my commitments as a Christian, and he would respond to each chapter. So it became a dialogue, or we could say a confession of faith where he would confess his faith to me and I would respond chapter by chapter and I would then confess my faith to him and he would respond chapter by chapter. That was a marvelous, marvelous endeavor. And um, we wanted to write in a way that when a Muslim would read the book, he would say, the Muslim faith has been well presented. And when a Christian reads the book, he would say, the Christian faith has been well presented. And I'm just thrilled, just simply thrilled, that the book is in Russia. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? It's now in about 12 other languages. Just In fact, recently it has been published in Arabic, endorsed by Al-Azhar University in Cairo, which is the leading Muslim university in the world and the Grand Mufti of Egypt writing a forward for that book. I was at Al-Azhar very recently uh, meeting with the office of the Grand Mufti, and they told me they're using that book now as a textbook in uh, their Muslim training programs for imams in Egypt so that the imams will understand who the Christians are and what the Christians believe. I'm amazed and very grateful for that. Katerega and I never imagined that that book would be used so widely as it has been used. So uh, that was part of my experience in Nairobi, a very fruitful time um, and a very interesting time to say the least.